A few days ago, to the bemusement of many, I posted a picture of my Apple IIe running macOS. Well, I'm here to say that this is indeed running macOS, it's still an Apple II, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy making vintage computers do impossible things, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Over the years, there have been a lot of really interesting homebrew projects for the Apple II, from storage and disk drive replacements to entirely new operating systems. But today, we're going to explore a relatively new project which only takes up a single expansion slot, and as you might have noticed, can do some pretty unbelievable things. I discovered this project while browsing the Apple Fritter Forum, a wonderful site that's basically inspired my entire hobby here. And there is a pretty incredible thread about the creation of what's going on inside this machine. And I'll definitely link that down in the description. It's this ESP32 soft card by CVT. And it allows the Apple II, 2 Plus, and 2E to run a huge amount of software that has no business running on one of these machines. Well, more or less. So I think that this card just looks cool. I mean, it really has a retro vibe with these socketed ICs in the middle here and this fully functional breadboard area that is quite cool. Up in the corner here is the SD card. There is video input and output. There is a few potentiometers here for volume since this also does speaker pass through. And of course, the brains of the operation right here, the ESP32 module with its little Wi-Fi antenna poking out the top here. I mean, it is amazing what this little card can do with an inexpensive microcontroller and a whole lot of ingenuity and creativity. Now, the way this thing talks to the Apple II, I think is pretty elegant. There's a fairly simple program that runs on the Apple II, which first locates which slot you've installed this card in, detects if there's a mouse card installed, and it then controls the card, switching video through a relay, which makes a satisfying click, and then forwards inputs from the Apple to the ESP32. The card itself is running ESP32 ports of various interesting software. So let me install this back in the system. I'll show you how the pass-through gets hooked up, and then we'll see what this thing can do. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, Ground News. Today's online media is a hellscape of bias, agendas, opinions, and cheap clickbait articles, which is why I've really taken a liking to Ground News. Ground News is a website and app that gathers related articles from more than 50,000 worldwide sources and crucially gives transparent insight into the biases, ownership, and general credibility of each source so you can see through those biases. Like, look at this article about Microsoft Copilot. I love the breakdown of biases, ownerships, and factuality of the sources. I can quickly see that 10% of the sources covering this lean left, 15% lean right, and 43% of the reporting outlets are owned by media conglomerates, which certainly makes sense in the tech space. And browsing the list here, I can not only get a quick impression of the overall coverage and angles to the story, but I can also see how different biases have different takes. It really feels like I can get a nonpartisan, non-biased view for the first time in a long time. So go to ground.news slash action retro or use the link down in the video description to subscribe today. If you sign up through my link, you'll get 40% off the Vantage plan, which is the same plan I'm on and has unlimited access to all features. I really do love the vision that Ground News has and I really do hope you'll check them out. So it is quite simple to install the card. I mean, it's very easy to work on an Apple II. Top just pops right off and uh, yeah, you can see <laughs> I do have quite a lot of cards in here. Doesn't matter what slot you put this in because the software will automatically detect it. So the only thing we have to worry about is the pass through. Fortunately, if you order yours off Tindy like I did, it comes with all the cables that you need. Specifically, it comes with a video pass through cable. 
and some pass-through cables for audio. There's a speaker connector kind of hidden all the way in the bottom right of the motherboard here. I'm going to install mine in slot seven here, primarily so the short cable here will fit for speaker in. And then for speaker out, I'm going to use the other cable with male connectors on it to go into the cable going to the speaker and then into speaker out. Video from the Apple II can go through this supplied short cable, which is actually very nice, and go through one of these holes in the case. That goes to the bottom connector here, which is video in, and your monitor gets connected to the top connector here. Now the card itself is not actually bootable, but the developer has included a disk image with the software on it that you can write to a floppy yourself or that you can use with something like a floppy emu or some other disk image emulator. And that's the route that I have gone. And when you switch on your Apple II now, you should hear two beeps. The first beep is coming from the Apple II itself, and the second beep is coming from that card. So now we know that the pass-through for audio is working, and since we see an image on the display, pass-through for video is also working. Now, I do have the disk image loaded up on my floppy emu, but I am using a Yellowstone drive controller card, and I'm actually not sure why, but I actually have to specify what slot it's in for it to boot from that image. So it's on slot number six, PR number six. Now we're going to boot from this disk image. Our options here are to run the card in NTSC mode, PAL mode, or hello. I actually don't know what hello does. Let's try that real quick. If we type B run hello, File type mismatch. Okay, I don't know what hello does. But if we do brun ESP32 NTSC, it looks for the card, finds it in slot seven, mouse card found in slot four, and now the display has clicked over to the soft card. This is now display from the soft card. <laughs> And we have some very helpful options here out of the gate. We can adjust the screen positioning here, which we don't really need to on my display here. And also we have just a whole bunch of commands that the developer has baked in to do things like connect to our Wi-Fi so we can use an FTP server built into the card to transfer files to the SD card. We have controls to calibrate the joystick, the mouse, we have functionality to update the firmware on the SD card, and we also have all sorts of software we can run in this list, like Doom, Wolfenstein 3D, different emulators for video game systems, like a Nintendo emulator, Sega Master System, PC Engine, which is TurboGrafx-16, and of course, our Macintosh emulator, which is probably my favorite thing about this because it is the most cursed thing about this. And I know you clicked on this video because you saw Mac OS running on an Apple IIe, and we'll get there, but I don't think that really gets across just how bonkers this card is. It's absolutely wild. I want to show you something. Bear with me a second. D-O-O-M, enter. Color or monochrome? Monochrome. Look at that. Holy cannoli. That is doom. <laughs> We're running on an Apple II. Let me turn the brightness up. And look, I know it's actually a port of doom to the ESP32 that's running, but let me tell you, when you're playing it on this Apple II using the keyboard and the monitor, you are playing doom on an Apple II. And just, <laughs> it's, it's so, wild and unbelievable and awesome. I mean, it plays awesome too. And even better, look, we can use an Apple II joystick. 
<laughs> to play Doom. How wild and anachronistic is this? Also, impossible to control with the joystick. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's turn this thing into a Macintosh using the built-in Mac Plus emulator. And just to make things a little more interesting, I've dug out an actual Mac Plus to compare it to. So we'll type M-A-C, return. And we're presented with two options for video mode, 480i, which is intended for LCD monitors, and 350p, which is best for CRT monitors. It flickers less, but we may need to play with the V-hold controls. We're gonna choose that option, and we'll go right in the middle for screen width. <laughs> There's the max startup chime. And yeah, we need to play with the V-hold. All right, well, it's not perfect and it is still a little flickery, but it's a Macintosh running on our Apple IIe. If we go to about this Macintosh, we are indeed emulating a Macintosh Plus with three megs of memory. And this image helpfully has a lot of software already available, including some games, some apps and hilariously, two in a Mac so we can run Apple II emulation inside of the Macintosh emulator inside of the Apple II. <laughs> uh, yeah, we will definitely try that in a second. But first, I'm really curious about something. Is this emulated Mac Plus on this ESP32 inside of an Apple II faster than an actual Mac Plus. I think that it is based on the forum thread, but I wanna see it in person. And on this Mac Plus, I have the same disc image, thanks to the magic of blue SCSI. So let's run the same speedometer benchmarks here. All right, both machines are finished and uh, <laughs> the results are hilarious. The actual Mac Plus scored a 0.871 CPU score, and the emulated Mac Plus inside of the Apple IIe scored a 2.02. .02. Overall scores are wildly different, but yeah, the results are in, and I'm just the messenger here, don't blame me. The Apple II is a better Macintosh than the Macintosh. All right, let's try a few other hilarious things on the Apple II Macintosh. Under apps, we have Photoshop version 0.63. Oh, it's so funny. I'm gonna do all of my video thumbnails on the Apple II. Look at that, it's Photoshop. And of course, we have to try two in a Mac, <laughs> the Apple II Macintosh emulator. Oh my goodness, look at that. We're running an Apple IIe inside of a Macintosh emulator, inside of an Apple IIe. 10 print, LOL, <laughs> this is surreal. 20, go to 10, run. Ah, it's so ridiculous. I freaking love it. <laughs> In addition to hilariously running a Macintosh emulator inside of an Apple II, there is also a PC emulator. Just type PC. We can boot from H, the hard drive, and we'll choose CGA monochrome, option number two. So now we're in DOS 610, and we can type Win <laughs> to hilariously boot Windows 3.0. Maybe this is more cursed than <laughs> running Mac OS. Oh my goodness, look at this. Adjust the V size a little bit, there we go. That's enough of that. We don't wanna taint this apple with this much Windows. <laughs> if we go into the GEOS directory and now type PC, we can launch DOS with GOS. Oh, look at that. Now that is much better than Windows. GeoWorks Ensemble 2.0. So 
So much better than Windows. Hey, look, <laughs> America Online is included. Yeah, let's see if we can dial in. Selected COM port does not exist. Please check my setup. Okay, according to the help file, if I get stumped while I'm trying to sign on for the first time, call the customer relations department. It gives me an 800 number, so uh, yeah, let's give that a call. Hi, thanks for calling AOL. All right, so far we've been testing everything out on this glorious green screen, Apple Monitor 3, but this does support color, so let's try something else. All right, in what is almost certainly an affront to the natural order of the universe, I've hooked up a lovely Commodore 1702 monitor to the Apple II, and uh, since we're already using retro technology with reckless abandon, I've also hooked up a Super Nintendo controller through a special adapter I got from Reactive Micro to the joystick port. This thing has Wolfenstein 3D, and if you thought we were getting out of here without playing Wolfenstein 3D on this thing, you thought wrong. Spelled it wrong. Wolf 3D. We are color. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, this is glorious. This is absolutely glorious. I still have to press spacebar to open the doors. <laughs> Ah! All right, we have PC Engine, which I never actually owned one of these. Street Fighter 2, Champion Edition. <laughs> awesome. Oh, it's running a little slow, but all right. <laughs> this is very, very hilarious. I'm playing Street Fighter on an Apple IIe on a Commodore color monitor. <laughs> All right, last thing I wanna show you is video. Yeah, there are some videos on here. We'll play them in color. <laughs> Look at that, it's Adrian Black. This was put on here by the developer. Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Check Post. that out. On the last couple videos, I'm Fast forward. <laughs> rather large. And apparently, you can encode your own videos to go on here. And do some pretty silly things. Amazing. All right, so this is such an incredible project. And I feel like I've barely scratched the surface of what this card can actually do. I mean, it's so freaking cool, especially to play Doom and Wolfenstein on this thing, because again, I know we're just playing a port of Doom to the ESP32 being controlled by this Apple II. But I'll tell you, when you're using the keyboard and the mouse and hearing the sound out of the speaker on this green screen, you are playing Doom on an Apple IIe. It is almost unbelievable. I really hope they add, say, a Game Boy emulator here because I'd love to play Pokemon on this thing. How ridiculous would that be? In any event, I'll link all this stuff down in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Drew Hamlin, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Graham, Greg from Hrut K Mods, James Fryman, James Lawry, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Nick Daniels, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics and Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.